Welcome to African Catholic Voices, a podcast service of the Pan-African Catholic Theology and Pastoral Network. My name is Father Stan Chu Ilo. I'm your host today. African Catholic Voices is a forum where we engage the voices of important players in the field, as well as the voices of those at the existential peripheries, local leaders, important leaders, but also uh, other leadership that we find in the continent at all different levels. Here, we bring to you the voices of people who continue in their own ways to shine a spotlight on the work of God in the continent of Africa. And today is my privilege to present to you uh, one of uh, the most influential uh, Catholic priests, very no uh, priest working in the continent of Africa for many decades who has become a household name. I am talking of no other person other than Nwana Tumuya Jumuya Joe Healy. Welcome to African Catholic Voices, Nwana Jumuya. Thank you. And as is our tradition here, Joe, people would like to know who is Nwana Jumuya Joe Healy. Can you introduce yourself to our audience? I am a Merino missionary priest, originally from the United States of America. I was ordained in 1966 and then went to Africa in 1968. And now I call myself a citizen of the world because I've been to 82 countries and I continue to be a student, a learner. Thank you very much, Joe. And what keeps you going in this in this mission? Well, that's very simple. My favorite Bible text comes from Luke chapter four, verse 43. Jesus said to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because for this person, in this purpose, I was sent. And so I try to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. I started my missionary life in Nairobi, Kenya. Then I went to Rulenge, Tanzania, then to Musoma, Tanzania, then to Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and back to now Nairobi, Kenya. And rather than the physical towns that we're used to hearing about, my new ministry is uh, on the internet. Uh, I'm called the Zoom Priest, or the other name given to me is Padre.com. And so I feel that uh, the new town that I'm going to is uh, on the internet. And that's why my ministry is the internet ministry. And you've been in um, the continent of Africa now, and you said since 1968, is that correct? That's right, 54 and years. 54 years. Those are quite some long years. I wasn't even born <laughs> <laughs> by the time you arrived. So um, we'd like to know, what, what have you been doing in Africa all these uh, years? Okay, well, uh, I started uh, back in 1968, the uh, bishops of the Amasea countries, that's nine countries in Eastern Africa, uh, it's Sudan, South Sudan, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Malawi, and Zambia. They wanted to start a communications department in Nairobi, social communications, uh, the media, radio, television, press, and film. So. I was trained for that particular uh, position and I came out and 
I am the founder of the Social Communications Office of Nairobi. And um, it's interesting, in my early years, I would call myself a communicator. But now in the recent times, when we're in uh, the Zoom world, and we use the internet, social media, I now would call myself a networker. So that's been my overall uh, ministry. But specifically, I've focused on small Christian communities, which is the pastoral priority for the church in Eastern Africa. And I have a special love for African proverbs, sayings, and stories. Yeah, what prepared you for this job, uh, Joel? Like you, you're a communicator, um, you're working, uh, establishing so many small Christian communities, you are attending international conferences, you are teaching at Tangaza College. Um, but where did you train? Did you study theology? Did you study communication? Um, where did you do all these uh, training before um, assuming these positions or were you learning on the job? Well, let's start with theology. I did my four years of theology at the Marino Seminary in Marino, New York. And our class of 1966, we are called pure Vatican II seminarians mm -hmm. because the four years of theology corresponded exactly with the four years of the Second Vatican Council. Mm -hmm. And then after ordination, I spent two years studying communications, especially mass communications, and then was assigned to go to Africa. I see. So you were studying theology during the Second Vatican Council sessions. And um, that's very interesting. Joe, were you influenced then subsequently by uh, the Second Vatican Council or what really inspired this missionary uh, zeal in you, but also your capacity always driving for inclusion, diversity, and recognition of African agency in the world church? I love the Second Vatican Council and that's why when Pope Francis has kind of revived an interest in the Second Vatican Council, I am clearly a Pope Francis priest. And so many of the original ideas that I learned about the Second Vatican Council, I'm delighted to be able to promote and to spread today. For example, when we say that uh, the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. That's from the liturgy document. I feel that I'm trying to encourage new creativity in the Catholic Church in Africa when I ask the question, how are we going to solve the Eucharistic famine or the Eucharistic hunger mm -hmm. in Africa so that many more millions of people will be able to uh, participate in mass and receive communion. Interesting, interesting, uh, Joe. So you describe yourself as uh, Pope Francis uh, priest. And um, uh, can you tell us more what you like about this Pope and why you think there are some who are not thinking the way you are thinking? Because this Pope uh, faces some opposition uh, Obviously, don't you see those signs of a resistance to the change or changes he's making? Yes, uh, but let's start with the positive. Uh, Pope Francis calls us to get out of our comfort zones and to uh, smell the sheep and to serve in the field hospital. Uh, and he loves pastoral theology. And that's where my interest is also. Small Christian communities, and the theology of communion we see as part of pastoral theology. And my goal all along is to help uh, the, the Vatican Council values uh, to be lived out on the grassroots level, on the local level. That's the big challenge. 
some people are uncomfortable with that. Uh, they're uncomfortable with being pushed uh, out of their comfort zone. But I think that's one of the challenges of the Holy Spirit today. And as the Pope Francis said in uh, The Joy of the Gospel, he said, uh, let us do things in a new way. Let us be bold and creative. And I try to follow that uh, call. Thank you. But why are some people opposed to him, including bishops? Uh, well, the way I see it, uh, there's a part of the Catholic Church, let's call it the far right, a conservative aspect of the church, and they're interested in the status quo. They want to keep things the way they are, and they're afraid of a change, of metanoia, of renewal. They are just uncomfortable with the spirit leading us in new ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, some of them are bishops. Specifically in Africa, some of the African bishops have very strong tribal or ethnic group traditions. And so they can't break out of that mold. I like jokes when I do my pastoral theology. And uh, when I meet a bishop, I ask him, how do you feel about washing the feet of women on Holy Thursday? That's mm -hmm. always my first mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. And within 30 seconds, I know how he's feeling. If he's <laughs> nervous about that question or doesn't want to answer it, I know he wants to stay with the status quo. And he has to be challenged as I am too, to change, mm -hmm. to adapt, so that we have equality of women. Uh, women claim that they're second class in the Catholic Church and they're second class in African culture. So we have to turn that upside down so that there's real inclusivity and equality. Thank you very much. You, you remind me of uh, Pope Francis's uh, favorite uh, analogy of the the people of God now as an inverted pyramid. Right. You know, so thank you. Welcome back to African Catholic Voices. And today I am so pleased that we have as our conversation partner, Nwana Jumuya Joe Healy, an American Merino priest, missionary, theologian, who is known uh, in Africa as the founder of small Christian communities because he spent a significant part of his work and mission in Africa building these communities, writing about them, articulating a theology of uh, a narrative theology for Africa and influenced by the Second Vatican Council continues to find and stimulate uh, new sites for reimagining how the church should be as we move into the future, listening to the spirit and helping to bring these changes so that all God's people will feel a sense of belonging. No one feels a guest in God's house. Um, the, the song you chose, Joe, is You Never Walk Alone. Uh, why, why did you choose this song? Well, uh, when I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, my mother loved American Broadway musicals. And some of the famous composers of the 50s were people like Rodgers and Hammerstein. And they wrote a Broadway musical called Carousel. And the lead song is You'll Never Walk Alone. And I think that fits so much into African culture in terms of community and uh, of unity. There's a Ugandan proverb that says, one hand washes the other. And I think that's a beautiful image. Mm -hmm. uh, and another one uh, related to the Eucharist is relationship is in the eating together. Mm -hmm. 
So my favorite proverb these days here in America says, if you want to walk fast, walk alone. If you want to walk far, walk together. And that's a perfect proverb for the synodal process, walking together, journeying together. Thank you. You're so filled with so much wisdom. There is so much that uh, we can learn from you, Nguana Jumuya. And you've been in the continent of Africa for over five decades. You have seen the evolution of theology in Africa. You have seen the church in Africa, different phases, the ups and downs. And what have been your impression first of theology in Africa and the church in Africa? Starting with the 1950s and the 1960s, most of the, of the theologians were expatriate missionaries coming from Europe and from North America. But over the decades, that has changed. And we have that famous statement of um, Pope, now St. Paul VI, you may and you must have an African Christianity. So as Laurenti Magessa, our beloved elder who passed away earlier this year has said, after that two decade history of African theologians studying in the West, in seminaries and theological colleges and universities in Europe and North America, now they are studying in Africa itself, such as the Catholic University of Eastern Africa, in Kenya and the Catholic University of West Africa in Nigeria, and then also French uh, uh, theological colleges like in uh, Ivory Coast and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So we have a new generation of African theologians. And the other proverb that I use all the time is the one that says, until the lions have their own historians, the history of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Well, I think that it, there's been a change now. So that now African theologians, uh, they are writing their own histories. And I mean men and women, not just priests and sisters, but also lay men and women. So this is a revolution in both the who and the how of African theology. And the church in Africa, what, what are your impressions? Are you, are you happy with what you see within the last 50 decades? You think uh, the church in Africa is growing as it says, I mean, this is popular saying that Africa has become the new center of world Christianity. So, and you've watched this, um, the exponential growth in number, but there are also some people who feel that the exponential growth in number does not translate into influence and impact in terms of conversion of life and transformation of the culture of uh, the social context and um, Christian witnessing um, in a very significant way. So um, we'd like to know what your impressions are about the church in Africa. Well. Right now, the church in Africa has been Africanized in the sense that most of the bishops are African, and uh, most of them have come from their African culture. But my concern is there's a challenge. And the Pope says, if you have a problem, turn that problem into a challenge and turn that challenge into an opportunity. And I think we still have a clerical, hierarchical, patriarchal, and that's male oriented and um, also self reverential church. And I think that has to dramatically change. And as the uh, theologian from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, 
Sister Jose Ngalula says, this change has to start on the grassroots level from below. And she encourages the development of small Christian communities, which is a new way of being church. So I'm hopeful. And one of the great theologians who died last year, Robert Schreider, who taught at Catholic Theological Union in Chicago, he said, it's time now for uh, the church on the grassroots. He says, lay people can be theologians on the grassroots level. And that's my hope for the small Christian communities. Thank you very much, Joe. And we come to the last question uh, for this, our episode uh, for listeners, just to let you know that we will have a second episode of this conversation with Nwana Jumuya Joe Healy. The synodal process is underway, and right now uh, some theologians have gathered in Rome to draft the instrumentum laboris for this um, synod coming up, the final stage of it coming up in October 2023. I have two questions for you, Joe. The first is, what should be top on the agenda for the global church? The second, what should be top on the agenda for the church in Africa? I think we have to answer that question with discernment in the light of the Holy Spirit. And what I'm hearing is I travel around the world and participate in the synodal process. Equality of all members and participation of all members in the Catholic Church are the top agenda. And that focuses specifically on women in the Catholic Church. We have to break the what they call the glass ceiling so that women have authority and decision making. And to be very concrete, I feel that lay people should be able to preach on Sunday to give the homilies at Sunday mass, both men and women. And that could be a concrete way of being inclusive. For the church in Africa, I think, again, we have to have a decision-making open to all parts of the Catholic faithful. The great theologian from Ghana, Peter Sarpong, said the deepest African value is participation. And we see that in our joyful liturgies. But I think often parish pastoral councils are consultative and then it ends up that the priest or pastor can make the final decision. I think those parish pastoral councils and as well diocesan pastoral councils should have deliberate vote so that really the people of God are involved in the decision-making process, especially from the grassroots. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, the idea of equality and participation that you highlighted, these are significant uh, movements that um, you are inviting the church to embrace so that we can really have a church where everyone feels a firstborn child of God. Thank you, Joe, especially for the gift of your life and witness, authentic witness to, to the faith, uh, authentic witness to your true and um, our common humanity and the sacrifice that you have made and your stay in power because it's not easy uh, for someone to stay the course as you have done over five decades, still fresh and still uh, rejuvenated and uh, producing rejuvenating perspectives and theologies to renew the church because someone will expect uh, someone in his 80s like you to be like a, a conservative, a restorationist, but <laughs> You're so fresh in your ideas and you're calling us 
to account for what we have received for a church that doesn't get fossilized in time, a church that doesn't grow old because it's a church that is evolving, following the footprints of God marked yeah, by the Holy Spirit. Let me just Holy add, uh, the name that I like best, when I went into class, I'm 84 years old, the seminarians at Tangaza, all in their 20s, started calling me Mze, which is the Swahili word for elder. For those of us who know the movie, The Lion King, the elder lion is called the Mze. And I said, no, no, not yet, not yet. Give me <laughs> another name, another name. So the next day they came in and they said, Padre, we have a new name for you. We're going to call you the youth from a long time ago. <laughs> so, so that youthful spirit, I hope, continues in me. Then I can share that with others. Thank you very much, Joe. And we ask the good Lord to keep you ever fresh and youthful, give you health of body, mind, soul, and spirit, and give you, as always, a fecund mind to give new ideas and fresh ideas to manure the earth that is uh, the faith and the church and the world. And as we come to the end of this episode, um, brothers and sisters, we will have a second episode of this conversation with our dear Nwana Jumuya Joe Healy next week. We invite you now, Joe, to conclude our conversation today with a short prayer and blessing. Thank you. I'd like to use African names of God in the blessing. God, our Father, is called Creator and Source. And then there's a beautiful name that the Maasai ethnic group have for Mary. She's called the nursing mother. And then Jesus across Africa is called the great healer. And then more specifically in Tanzania, the Sukuma people call Jesus the eldest brother, chief intercessor. And then in Uganda, the Holy Spirit is called the unsurpassed great spirit. And so May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Creator and Source, Nursing Mother, Jesus, Great Healer and un Eldest Brother, Chief Intercessor, and the Unsurpassed Holy Spirit be upon you and be with you and strengthen you and inspire you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Joe Healy, Merino missionary, priest, theologian founder of Christian, small Christian communities and a youthful heart for this blessing and for being here with us. Brothers and sisters, next week we have a fresh conversation with Joe Healy. We ask you to tune in. And until then, we ask you to be strong in your faith, to be fervent and faithful in your love, to be courageous, in hoping. Take care of your life. Take care of the lives of your brothers and sisters, your neighbors, the life of creation, everyone. Let's take care of this beautiful earth, this common home that God has given us. God bless you and see you again next week. Bye.